Now let's consider the most general type of a log containing integral. i equals the integral from 0 to plus infinity log x divided by x squared plus 2x plus 2 dx. Well, the first step is the obvious one. We need to draw a branch cut which coincides with our contour. So let's do this. Then we need to pull the contour slightly upward so it runs along the upper bank of the branch cut, like this. And equate our original integral with this new contour one, effectively fixating the regular branch of our multivalent log function. Now question 1. The possible closure of the contour. The upper dump dumbbell won't do the trick, because now the single valid part of our integrand is neither even nor odd function of x. To see this, let's draw this open dumbbell, complete with two semicircles, and consider the integral along its left leg. There we introduce the standard parameterization x equals 0 times e to i pi, which is effectively minus 0. And once we plug in this change into our integrand, we will see that the denominator of our function is changed. So the integral along the left leg of our dumbbell is now equal to the integral from plus infinity to 0 of log rho plus i pi divided by rho squared minus 2 rho plus 2 minus 0. And as a result, we won't be able to express this integral via our original one due to the different denominator. So the open up dumbbell is not an option. So the only path which is left to us is our standard semi-infinite dumbbell. But as we remember from our second example, the log containing integral taking along such a contour cancels out. So let me remind you how it happened. As you hopefully remember, the log function on the lower bank of the branch cut looked as follows. ln of x minus i0 equals ln of x plus i0 plus 2 pi i. And as a result, the integral along the lower bank is equal to the one from plus infinity to 0 log of x plus i0 plus 2 pi i divided by the denominator dx. So once we combine the upper and lower bank integrals and interchange the limits of integration in the second one, we will obtain the cancellation, like this. And the only remaining integral is the remainder term which is of no interest. So, as I mentioned earlier, we have two options. Either we choose another deformation of the contour, or we change the integrand. Well, it seems that the changing of the contour is not effective, so let's leave our contour as a standard semi-infinite dumbbell and opt for a changing of the integrand itself. Well, how do we change it? It's interesting that the necessary change is almost obvious. We substitute the log function in nominated with log squared. So instead of the original integral, we consider a modified integral, let's call it i1, with the square of the log instead of the log in the denominator. The principal difference from the first case is that now the integrals along the upper and lower banks of a branch cut subtract in a different manner. So let's see in detail how this happens. Now our lower bank integral, i c minus, is represented as from plus infinity to zero, as always, but log of x plus 2 pi i squared dx. So once we interchange the limits of integration and combine it with our original integral, the nominators will subtract differently.
And now after cancellation, we'll obtain minus 4 pi i times log x plus 4 pi squared in the denominator dx. So once we split this integral into two parts, we'll see that the first part is nothing but our original integral up to negative 4 pi i prefactor. And of course, as always, there is a remainder term. Now we come to the following conclusion. In order to compute the integral with the first power of logarithm in the denominator, we need to consider a modified closed quarter integral with log squared in the denominator. So now suppose your original integral contains log squared in the denominator. So what do you think would be a correct change of the integrand which allows you to compute the initial integral? So make a guess. Our goal is achieved. We managed to express some closed counter integral via our original integral, which is nothing but minus 4 pi i times i plus the remainder term. Now we simply need to use the residual theorem to compute our closed counter integral. So let's do it on our next slide.